fuck? What the hell, man? You think this is funny? Who the fuck are you? Remember, winners don't do drugs. Hello dudes and dudettes, Bandyman here, and today we review Lodestar, The Legend of Tully Bodine. Released back in 1994, this game came out on PC and the Sega Mega Drive. Now, this ain't no gem of the FMV genre, it was never well received, which is oddly surprising, but I see why. I'll come back to that. First of all, the story. The FMV scenes themselves are really well done, and we even have a few capable actors such as Ned Betty and Barry Primus, with a host of supporting actors and actresses. But <laughs> don't worry, that's only for the intro, you think there'd be more? Nah, there won't be any more of that through the game, don't worry. The only guys you see when playing the actual game is Tully, the main character, Sheriff Wumples, the guy with a stick up his ass who doesn't really like you, the unknown trucker who loads you apparently stolen and basically commits suicide to get you back. He will fucking kill himself to get you back. Idiot. Tully. You're a worthless weenie! So in total, three guys you're gonna see if you don't include Ward, your AI associate, and the tower controller. Talking about Ward, he's one of the best characters. Of course, limited of the characters, but he's one of the best. But still one of my favourites. Don't know why. Perhaps I'm just a big softy towards my fellow AI. Tully, after these repairs, should I have somebody clean the windshield? You know, I hate it when these these things work on Lodestar. Things? Yeah, things. Clumsy robotic coil changes and hole benders. Now don't tell me you're gonna take offense. Do you refer to me as a thing when I'm not around? No, Mortimer, I never refer to you when you're not around. Anyway, off track. Back to the story. You basically get approached by a man who doesn't know what accent he is meant to be doing until the last scene when he speaks some sort of Irish dialect. Not very convincing, but basically he offers Tully a very nice contract, all expenses paid to a whole cargo of unknown origin, until you pick it up, that is. Tully Baldine? Yeah, could be. My name is William Snid. I represent Carl Slagan. Here's my card. I was wondering if we could have a moment. If you're not there to get the cargo in the next 16 minutes, it might not be there at all. Right? Camels. How do we get rid of the smell? Really? 20 camels is suffice enough to throw tens, no, hundreds of lives away. Probably millions of dollars worth of damage simply for camels. This guy. This guy's a dick. Before we send in the cyber pro. Lord, all senses on. Sorry, Francis, I got a hot date on Mars. Tully, let's do lunch next time. This is Come on, Tully. Don't do this. Maintain clearance. Oh, people, Star is accelerating. Collision. Regroup. Boy, heads up. Buy me some fuel and fast. Anyway, you can guess by now this leads to a chase as you aim to get your load to the launch pad and get the hell off the moon. <sighs> Let's move on to the mechanics of the game. They are basic. From the get-go, you have shields, weapons, and a horn you will never get to use again on the second level, or third level, or finale. 
Oh yeah, did I not say? There are only three levels. Yeah, three levels. Four if you include the final boss battle after you take off, but I would not class that as a whole level. It only lasts five, even less, minutes. Each level covers three small changes to the scenes. Sometimes the same scenes, it gets repetitive really easily, and if you're good, you'll probably complete it in about 40 minutes to an hour. Though it took me over an hour to do it, this game can get really difficult, you know? <laughs> there's a fucking hard difficulty level?! What?! Luckily, there's maintenance bays halfway through some of the levels, so it's not too bad. <sighs> the three levels are again basic. Go to the observatory, go to the comms dish, go to the launch tower. Though going back to the weapons, after level 2 when you get refueled, your horn is replaced with some depolarizing thing that uses a block worth of fuel when you use it. So there are now a variety of two weapons and we're only halfway through the game. I've gotta find some fuel. Ward, every cop in Mendeleev is out trying to stop us. The police yard motor pool! Tully, the gates will be locked. I know. I do not have the code. I know, I know. Don't you think we should slow down? Open SSP. Channel 1. Open Tully. Surrender, Dorothy. How did you know the code? That's the same all over the solar system. I think the police force around the universe need to consider keeping some police units in the base or that the police depot so no one will come because everyone seems to know the damn code to that door <laughs> if Tully is right. But getting shot at is not the only problem. You're gonna have to maneuver a big vessel through a network of rails by going left and right and trying to keep yourself going in the right direction with various obstacles in the way with the majority of them having deadly consequences of course. But I bang on about this game. It is simple, but what do you expect from a rail shooter? You follow a route and shoot. The game is very good looking, it tends to stretch a bit on the bigger monitors, but overall a pretty looking game I think. The characters, despite their flaws, seem to have some thought actually behind them, but that's where the good stopped, unfortunately. Overall, it's a short game, good for one playthrough, two if you can stomach it, but the repeating levels, the short gameplay, and even more repeating enemy units, there's just a distinct lack of variety. But hey, at least you get to battle a boss before finishing the end of each level, which can be a challenge, as you need to be really good at your shield controls and aim. But each boss is essentially the same, shoot their gun ports and they will eventually explode. Go. Going back to what I said before, being surprised it wasn't well received, I think that is still true. The game isn't perfect and it has its flaws, but from the hours I played, it wasn't really buggy, it worked, it was good fun for a quick playthrough. This game is for when you want to quickly blow some stuff up without thinking too hard about it, and have an inter interesting cast and story to go with it. More disappointing than a bad game, I would say, and it's worth a go if you haven't tried it. Another thing to know is there was meant to be a sequel. If you get to the end, there's a cryptic message that says, stay tuned. It makes you think, what if they had actually made it? Because as far as I know, or can find out, no such sequel that was ever made. And I think that's a pity, because it would have been interesting to see where this story would have developed. Perhaps the mechanics for the game could have been improved add a bit more gameplay, hopefully make the game a bit longer. There's only better that can come from a sequel in this from this game. So it'd have been interesting. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the review. Till next time do's and do that's take it easy. What? We're finished. Everything you know could be a lie.
Case Officer Thorne, welcome to Interlink. Ooh, spy game. Remember, winners don't do drugs.